All right. Tell me when I hit the sweet spot. Deeper, you pusillanimous pilsner pusher. All right, all right. Defense! <laughs> Defense! <laughs> Uh, that's pretty dumb, but, uh... Extended warranty? How can I lose? Perfect. I remember back in college, I kept a bottle of Everclear in my freezer for those special nights where I really wanted to forget about my troubles. For those of you who don't know, Everclear is grain liquor with an alcohol concentration of 95%. <laughs> <laughs> That's more than rubbing alcohol, my friends. But you know what? It still kills fewer brain cells than watching the Acolyte. Hell, I feel like drinking paint thinner might make you smarter after ingesting Leslie Headland's sludge. But exactly what makes the seventh episode of the Acolyte so dumb? And can a final episode of the season turn things around? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive back into the raging dumpster fire that is Disney's Star Wars. Before we get into this, make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out with continuing to grow and it's totally free. I'm not really sure if all of us YouTubers are beating a dead horse at this point here, but I'm still having a lot of fun making videos about the Acolyte. I actually haven't felt this slow and dumb ever since that time I chugged 17 different types of alcohol and proceeded to puke all over Phi Kappa Tau's living room and hallway sophomore year. Needless to say, I won't be receiving the same ban with Disney as I did with that frat, but I digress. The penultimate episode of The Acolyte has hit the torrents and I can't say it's made that big of a splash on the high seas. Disney can't even get people to watch this trash for free, let alone pay a measly 99 cents a month for their fledgling streaming service. But let's get this over with so my brain can recover a bit. Episode 7 of The Acolyte takes us back to the lesbian witch coven planet 16 years ago, but now we get to see the story from the Jedi perspective. You would think that the writers can turn the ship around and write a redemption arc for the Jedi, but you'd be wrong, dear viewer. Leslie Headland and these modern writers are going all in on subverting your expectations. This episode sees them collecting samples for god knows what reason, before Jedi Squid Game goes off on a hike in the woods and stumbles upon the only other humans on the seemingly uninhabited planet. I'm not going to get into why this is retarded since the Critical Drinker already hit the main point. How could the Jedi be dumb enough to miss the Witch Coven, full of lights, on top of a mountain that can be seen from hundreds of miles away? Yeah, this is also what did it for me. That's when I felt my gray matter withering and dying a slow, painful death. But let's keep going on this path to intellectual death, shall we? So we get a healthy dose of nonsensical arguing from the Jedi about whether they should take Osha or not, where we see Jedi Squid Game and Trinity get in into it, while Jedi Dalsim Yoga Flame gets his mind taken over by the lesbian witch coven along with the Wookiee Jedi. Trinity jumps in to save the day, though. Oh, and how could I forget the scene with Jedi Dalsim Yoga Flame and the Lesbian Witch Coven? I really can't figure out why he self-deleted in the prior episode after watching this. Although I think I know someone who might. So Squid Game Guy summons Trinity and the others, and he wants to go all in as a group because he's worried about the terrible twins or something. But Trinity's like, nah, that's a bad idea because a show of force right now might provoke an armed conflict. But he's like, aw, please. And she's like, okay then. Nice to see you sticking to your guns there, lady. Then strong female character number four gets into token white guy's head, and there's a really weird scene where it seems like she's trying to force herself on him while he cries about it. Hmm, an older predator abusing their power to seduce an unwilling young victim while everyone else around them pretends not to notice? Write what you know, eh, Leslie? <laughs> I think the critical drinker says it best when he echoes what I've been saying all along. Leslie Headland got greenlit for this trash because she has the goods on Harvey's adventures with Disney. She really is writing what she knows best. What? <laughs> You West gotta answer this, you got it. How do you think Leslie Headland got the green light for the Acolyte? Oh, you didn't... gotta give him that hook too and spit on that thing, you get me? <laughs> Man, I really can't believe this chick graduated from NYU. This college really does put out a mediocre product. 
I thought it was a good school, but if this is the best of NYU's graduates, it really makes an excellent case for trade school. The writing and story structure of the entire series is completely out of whack. Not only does it waste an insane amount of time getting to a point, it never even arrives there. The two flashback episodes really could have been just one episode shown in the very beginning so you'd actually have a sensical story structure. But Leslie Headland and her merry band of progressive morons are so busy trying to subvert expectations that they forget about basic storytelling techniques. And I have an idea why though. Leslie Headland should really go on the Moth podcast where people tell gripping stories to live audiences. They even have a book on how to approach storytelling. Maybe the Moth can do a better job than NYU could with Headland. With only one episode of The Acolyte left, I really can't see them tying up the story neatly, and I think that's actually on purpose. Leslie Headland is gunning for a second season, and Disney will greenlight it because they are that afraid of their Sound of Freedom connection to Harvey Weinstein. For now, all we can do is wait and see. But what do you guys think about all this? Do you think the Acolyte will tie everything up in the last episode? Or are we getting a sloppy cliffhanger? Please do let me know down below in the comments. And as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.